Hello there, you're watching The Candy Show here on YouTube. Last time I did an empties, I had run out of battery space when I still had this big container of makeup and I promised the next time I did empties that that's what I would start with. Well, this is time for empties and this is the container I'm gonna start with. So this is all mostly makeup type stuff. I'm gonna start with this Besame um, matchbook which looks a little bit like that and this is the coolest neatest kitschiest funnest little contraption Besame Cosmetics is a cosmetics company that specializes in retro they make their makeup look like the packaging looks like makeup from many years ago the lipsticks and perfumes are all homages to certain points in time and they have a whole array of these beautiful red lipsticks of which i have about six or seven of them and they're in the old-fashioned bullet which is a smaller bullet but even a, a small bullet sometimes when you're carrying a super small clutch is hard to take with you when you go out so besame created this little matchbook and what was in here were six little matches but at the end of the matches the red part was actually lipstick just a, just enough to touch up for going out but like there was enough like you could touch out all evening so if you were going out um, you could just put this in your clutch and touch up using the little matches in here I had it forever because for a long time I didn't want to use it they all come in the color Besame Red um, but finally I used it up and I just loved it. I'll probably get another one. This thing has saved my life since menopause. My mother has had, my mother had like this white hair all over her face and I always thought it was so soft and it was so nice. But my mother never wore makeup. So of course it looked okay to me. Um, when I started menopause, actually it wasn't right when I started menopause. It was somewhere around... I want to say 45 I grew that coating of hair that my mother had except I wear foundation all the time and foundation on top of hair does not look good so I started shaving my face these are the razors I use they're technically supposed to be like brow shaping razors I got this one on Amazon but since I've gotten these I see Sephora carries them now so I'll probably just start buying on Sephora these are amazing. This is not amazing. This is the Sephora Instant Eye Makeup Remover. Um, I had it in my travel kit forever. I just wanted to get to the bottom of it. It takes practically nothing off. You know what this removes? It'll remove your eyeshadow. And that's about it. Eyeliner and mascara? Not a chance. Came to the end of the life of a beauty blender. Um, I keep my beauty blenders for exactly three months. I have a traveler's notebook where I write down the dates that I use things that things need to be thrown out, like the head of my Clarisonic or my beauty blenders. And this one was one of the summer bright orange ones. No other sponge compares to beauty blender. This is unusual to come to the bottom of an eyeshadow, especially a Lancome eyeshadow, because they are not very buttery. They're quite hard pressed. This was in the color Latte, and it was just a very matte eyeshadow about the color of my skin. The reason I went through it so quickly, uh, well not really quickly, but I actually used it all up, um, is because it is what I use for ages just as like a base coat. No matter what I was going to do on my eye, I would just coat, coat the whole eye with this after my um, like eye primer. Uh, so anyway, color these, these ones in this packaging are called color design. All done. I opened a new Kat Von D tattoo liner. Um, this is no need to talk about this. Everybody knows how amazing it is. I used up this. It's the Origins Perfect World Antioxidant Cleanser with white tea. Denise and I were away for almost all of August and we actually used this. It's a really nice cleanser. This is a firming mask from Glam Glow and I have to say this is a peel away mask. You know how I always complain about peel away masks? I did this one a few nights ago right before shaving my face so I still had all those hairs on my face but it wasn't painful. This is the first time I found a peel away mask which first of all really completely dried, really completely peeled away and didn't hurt. I would definitely buy this in full size. Now there's a lot of mascaras in here and it's not because I've used them all since the last trash time. It's just the mascaras always go down to the bottom of the bag. So if I end up not emptying the bag, they, they pile up and I just thought I better get all these out of here. This is the first one. It's a big huge tube. It's Bobbi Brown's eye opening mascara. 
The wand looks a little bit, sorry if the camera shook. Bruiser, our dog, as you can hear, will not stop walking around. You just have to put up with it. Um, it's got this big honking wand on it, and I hate it. It does, like, it's not that I hate it, but, like, Bobby Brown mascaras are not $7. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think this is close to 30 bucks, And they're just not great. I, I, I don't, I knew they weren't great because I've gotten enough testers of them. I can't remember how I got this. I didn't, I know I didn't buy it. It came in some kind of a kit that I got. And it's not that they're bad mascaras. It's just that they're average. They're okay. And when I'm paying that much for a mascara, like, I want it to be Boom. This is a rather boom mascara. This is the, actually this isn't the mascara. This is the Tinted Primer. They're real from Benefit. It's probably my favorite primer on the market. Um, if I'm going to use the lash primer, this is the one I'm going to use. I got sent this from Influencer. It's the Mega Multiplier Mascara by Revlon. I love the packaging. This is so pretty with the matte black and the shiny blue. Um, and it's got like an old fashioned type wand, but in a bit of a cone shape. But again, it's like when you call it Mega Multiplier, I expect it's going to make my lashes really thick and glossy. It's kind of a dry mascara and it did not really do much at all for my lashes. So, um, I gave it like a three. Again, it wasn't a bad mascara, but it sure as heck didn't Mega Multiply them. This is an oldie, but a goodie, but in some special packaging. This is the uh, Lights Camera uh, Lashes by Tarte, but this summer they came out with this beautiful iridescent packaging. I've owned this a million times, I will own it a million times more. Um, and I re just really enjoyed having this bright shiny packaging for the summer. And speaking of Tarte lash products, uh, let going of my shiny purple lash curler by Tarte. I change my lash curlers out about every six months. And if you think that is excessive or wasteful, I will say this to you. You only need once have your lash curler break while in the process of curling for you to be careful to never have that happen again. They are not meant to last forever, people. I clean mine every day as I use it. I change my little rubber out about um, halfway through the life of it. So they usually come with a spare rubber. I'll use the first rubber for three months, second rubber for three months, and then I let it go because eventually all this mechanism does get weak. And I one time had it right up, macking on it, and it broke. And it was incredibly painful, not to mention it. my makeup was ruined for the day. I'm lucky I didn't blind myself, so really, they're not meant for life. Uh, this is a gimmick. I'm going to say that right off. This is the Grandiose Mascara by Lancome. Let me just say, I've said it before, um, long-time viewers, you have heard me say this so many times. Before everybody got into high-end um, mascara, I feel like the moment it happened was Dior Show. Until Dior show, the only really expensive mascara that people spent money on, that people talked about, was Lancome De Finicils. That was the Cadillac of mascaras forever. And then Dior came out with that Dior show mascara, and after that, it seemed like everyone put out a $30 tube of mascara. And suddenly that old rule of, oh, you throw your mascara out after three months, so don't spend any money on it, just go and buy The Great Lash by Maybelline. That went out the window and the mascara game got very competitive. I still say the bulk of Lancome mascaras will take the Pepsi Cola challenge any day against other mascaras. But this, I feel, they they tried to do something they didn't have to do. See how hard it was to pull out? Because it's got this crazy whacked out wand. I would say this, if you're just starting to use mascara for the first time, perhaps this would be helpful to you. They've designed it, I think, for people who do this when they go on the opposite eye. I have been using a straight one mascara for nigh on, I don't know, 37 years. I think I was about 15 when I was able to first wear makeup. So I'm used to doing this, and then when I'm going to do the other eye, I switch hands and I do this. Because of the shape of this wand, I kept hitting my cheek with the wand because I have learned how to do mascara with a straight wand. So for me, um, the mascara itself was all right, but I just think, I, I predict this. I predict within three years, this will no longer be on the market. The Finicils, however, will still be standing strong. Now, do you remember last Christmas, I got that beautiful big Clinique 
um, lip sampler. It was like a long pink metal tin and it had a whole bunch of minis of their chubby sticks. Well, I've used two of them up in this round. Some of them are the very sheer kind and some of them are opaque. I love them all. They all have a lip balmy type feel and when I fly, which if you watch often you know is all the time. This is what I continually apply when I'm in the air. This one is uh, number 13 Mighty Mimosa and it was the moisture color tint so it was like a lighter it's the it's basically the color of this the pink and then this one was really pretty it was called uh, Grandest Grape and it's the chubby stick intense so it put a lot of color it was it was beautiful because it was like a throwback to um, what was that raisin that was huge with Revlon back in the 90s? Oh my god, I can't believe I can't remember the name of that. I wore it constantly even though it looked the shits on me because I just wanted so much to be in that brown 90s lipstick mode. It was something raisin. I don't think it was... It was like something raisin. Anyway, this was very cool because it gave almost like um, an updated version of that. So it didn't look dated, but it definitely... For those of us who had some fun back in the early 90s, got to remember back to that time. I'm letting this go because liquid eyeliners, you know, you're not supposed to keep more than six months because those little bugs that live in your lashes get in the liner. Uh, but I'm sad to see it go because it was such a wonderful thing. It's 24-7 liquid eyeliner by um, Urban Decay in the color Woodstock. It just, look, what a cool eyeliner in a bright, shiny pink and I loved it for all the years I had it. It's still not dried out, but I just don't want to take a chance because uh, again, speaking of things you never want to do more than once, get pink eye and you'll never keep eye products longer than you're supposed to after that. They had two of them, baby. Raisin Rage and Rum Raisin. Okay, Denise just looked it up online. Gotta love having Denise behind the camera. It was Raisin Rage and Rum Raisin. And if you remember, um, I think Cindy Crawford did the ads for it, but you know who wore that color all the time and looked so amazing was Stephanie Seymour. If you go back and look at the old Guns N' Roses videos, uh, like November Rain and uh, Don't Cry Tonight, she she's I mean she's still drop dead gorgeous that woman, but like whoa in her early twenties she was a rocket and she wore that brown lipstick anyway. Those of you who are my age, you're going to walk down memory lane with me on that. Those of you who are younger, seriously, go Google that video. You're going to love it. Uh, here's another mascara that is well worth the money. This is Roller Lash Mascara by Benefit. It's got the curled one, and I absolutely love this. Uh, this one I could do without. This is Buxom. See how it, it's not, you don't unscrew it. You open it like this, um, and it's okay. But for me, so often, a bunch of mascara gets jammed up around this push in pull out thing and it gets messy really quick hmm not for me now you will remember me saying I hated this when it first came out it's the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara the regular in the pink tube I loved when I bought it in waterproof I hated it I found it was super clumpy and I just I was like oh my god how can this be so different then flash forward a year and I bought some kit that came with a sample size. So I was like, well, I have it, I'm gonna use it. I friggin' loved it. And I used it just about all summer because I like waterproof mascara in the summer when I get sweaty a lot and you tend to be around water more. And uh, I'm starting to think that maybe the first tube I bought just happened to be a bad tube because this is the bomb. Ooh, this has got all messy, so I'm gonna try not to get it on my hands. For the longest time in the early 2000s, this was my favorite eyeshadow or mascara because my esthetician at the time, Kathleen, um, used this exclusively. It's the Blink Mascara. It used to be called something else. It was, I think it was called Yes or We or no, Kiss Me is what it used to be called. And it was the very first formula of tubing mascara that I had ever ever experienced tubing mascara is very cool it doesn't flake it doesn't smudge it actually makes little tubes on the lashes you don't need eye makeup remover at the end of the day you wet your fingers and the, the little tubes just slide right off your lashes which is so cool I still like it but the thing is that now the way mascara formulas are so thick and rich and they make your lashes so plump 
I find it very, very hard to go back to uh, such a fine mascara. But on no makeup makeup days, it's a nice one. Oh wow, this was a fail. So I love Tarte products, um, particularly because they have a lower chemical load than a lot of other products. So they came out with this uh, Tartist Pro eyelash glue, which is the paint on eyelash glue, similar to the Duo paint on eyelash glue, so I thought I would try it. This one is black. I think they have another one. I might try them on them. I don't know if you can see how messy this tube is. I barely had this for any time at all, and it got so messy, and I mean, I clean up my my tubes almost every time I use them, but I could not keep this um, fresh or clean. There's so much buildup of goop on it, um, just glue that kind of got thick and hardened. Again, I don't know if I got a bad tube, but when it was brand new, I loved it. It worked wonderfully, but boy, it got it went bad fast, I'll say that. A Their Real Mascara from Benefit. You've all seen what this looks like, another uh, mascara that I think is well worth the cash. This used to be a favorite of mine by Benefit. It's the Bad Gal Lash. It has that big, big wand similar to Dior Show. And I really loved this for a long time, but now I think Benefit has so raised their mascara game that this is taking a bit of a back seat. And again, in the, in the spirit of not wanting to keep things with little bugs in it, I finally let this go and it was hard for me. This is by Cargo. It's the Glitter Top Coat Eyeliner. So whatever other liner you put on, you could just paint this over it and it left just a beautiful, I don't know if you can see it in this light, but it left a beautiful line of glitter. I'm really, really sad to see that go. I wish someone else would come up with something like this. Wow, got to the bottom of this. This is an oldie but a goodie, and I think everybody recognizes it, knows it. It's the L'Oreal Infallible um, Eyeshadow in Amber Rush. I don't know if there's enough in there for you to sort of see the color, I guess, a little bit. Um, it's just, it's like a like a frosted stand, I would almost call it. I wear it constantly in the summer. In fact, in the summer, if I'm not doing anything on stage, I pretty much have that on my lid with mascara and a little black in the waterline and that's it. It's just to me like I, I let go of all the other ones from this line and if they stop making this, I think they should just keep this color. If you recall um, Clinique when they came out with the Almost Lipstick in Black Honey, they made a whole line. The line never went anywhere. They discontinued the line but they kept Black Honey because that has been a cult, cult classic now forever. I think this is going to go down that same road. This I thought was gimmicky, but I actually really enjoyed it. It's the Tarte, what do they call this? Uh, I think it's called the Sculptor. This was a small size of it. I've since bought it in full size. It's basically a stick um, contour and I would just like draw some lines where I wanted to contour and then take my beauty blender to blend it in. Loved it. Really fast, really easy, great for traveling because it's not messy. Sad to see the end of this. This was a um, um, Annabelle Stay Sharp Self Sharpening Lip Pencil in the color Berry. Uh, Annabelle came out with these first and they sent me this for free actually a long time ago. And then Smashbox came out with them. And they're just these, they're the coolest mechanical pencil because every time you put the cap on, it sharpens the lid and pops it up a little bit. Um, and I just love this color and I love this formula. Something I did not love, this was I think a miss. I don't think you're going to see these on the market long. It's the Their Real Push Up Liner by uh, Benefit. It's that weird rubber tip liner that you're supposed to crank up and it crumbles and it's a complete gimmick. I hated it. This one was in the purple. Speaking of things I hate, Sigma brushes. When I first started watching YouTube, I got so sucked in because so many people talked about Sigma and recommended Sigma and Sigma, Sigma, Sigma. So I bought a whole bunch of kits. Almost all my Sigma brushes, they shed. They leave me with hair all over my face. This was from the travel kit that I had for ages by Sigma and I threw it out and then shortly after I realized that I had replaced a number of the brushes in it it owed me nothing. I had been taking it on the road with me for almost six years. I got rid of it and I bought a really nice Sephora Pro set for when I travel. And this is going in the garbage. This is another one of those Urban Decay 24-7 liners. This one was in El Dorado, which is a very uh, well-known gold with 
uh, Urban Decay. Again, it makes me so sad to let that go. That is so gorgeous. But again, I just watched a thing on YouTube about all the bugs on our body and the ones in your lashes are particularly gross. This is a product I really loved. It's by Dior. It's called Lip Glow. It was their original one. Look, I've dug that out so far you can't even see it. Now they have them in like different tints, but originally when it came out, it was just this one, which is just give a tiny little bit of a pale pinkish tint. Um, and I just love this. I always have it in my purse. I've, I've since replaced it. Denise bought me this and I completely fell in love with it. Clarence Translucent, Translucent Light Lip Comfort. And it's basically lip oil. Um, and it comes with this big massive doe foot applicator which is so comforting on the lips and this one was just natural there was no color in it it made your lips look so beautifully glossy though but it really moisturized them I've since got it with like a tiny little bit of pink uh, tint in it but what a great product another liquid liner past its prime this one by Stila in the color periwinkle again gorgeous color just can't keep these things forever. This is a product I used to love, but now I'm over. It's the Porefessional by Benefit. I had a bunch of large tubes I'm actually bringing home to give away uh, to the women in my family because I am now past the mattifying primer and so into the glow primer. So now I'm using mostly the, the uh, Marc Jacobs Coconut Glowy one, the Tom Ford Glow, and the... Um, a Charlotte Tilbury Wonder Glow. I'm just, I've moved past that mattifying primer stage, but back in the day, I did love this. This was a wonderful product I was sad to see end. It's the It Cosmetics Brow Powder Waterproof Perfect. Dark Brown is the color of this one, and it's just got a spoolie on one end and your pencil on the other end, and it's a really nice, cool toned brown, and I loved it. This I love, but it's so damn expensive. It's the Provage by Elizabeth Arden Anti-Aging Skin Serum. It's a really nice serum. You really see a difference in your face, but oh, I think it's like, I want to say maybe $300 for a bottle of this, so it's crazy. This was a fun product, which again, I thought was going to be a gimmick, but wasn't. It's the Tarte Friction Stick. You can see it's like a dark blue, almost black stick. You get your face wet and then you rub it over your face and it's both exfoliating. There's a rough texture, but it also suds it up and then you just wash your face and rinse it off. Um, and this was a little sample size of it. I really enjoyed it. Oh, this was a mascara that I was like, what's the point? It's by Pure Minerals. I guess if you're someone who doesn't like mascara, you could wear it because your lashes look absolutely the same after you put it on. <laughs> <laughs> laughter from the peanut gallery uh this was a cherry culture eyeliner that i had bought it's like one of those eye pencils you see how bright white it is and i used to put it in my waterline but i'm kind of moved past the white i'm wearing today uh mark jacobs pale pale lilac uh which is supposed to make you look more awake another bobby brown mascara that i don't like this one was smoky eye again all right not for 30 bucks. This, I love, love, love. It's the Tarte uh, Inner Rim Liner in the color uh, Continuous Black. This really, when you get it on your waterline, stays put, stays black all day. There's only one liner I like better for my waterline than this, and that's the Too Faced. Um, their eyeliner in black is so black. Back when um, I first started doing liquid liner, this used to be my jam. It's the Lancome Art Liner, uh, which is like an ink pot with an actual brush. As I've aged and my uh, eyelid, eyelid skin is a little crepey, this does not work so well for me anymore. It's because if you make the slightest mistake, it's really obvious. And when you have crepey eyes and a, and a paintbrush, mistakes happen. This was a cute little mascara. I didn't hate it, but I didn't go crazy over it, but it has this cool kind of looks like some kind of a weird sex toy um, spirally brush. Uh, it was okay. Uh, this was the Marc Jacobs eyeliner, which is a favorite of mine. Really nice black line. Uh, I love it almost as much as tattoo liner. This I love. I hate the name. I wish Mac would change the name. It's called Indian wood. 
um, but it's one of their paint pots and it's just a really beautiful rich reddish brown um, it's totally gone I can't even show you and it's just um, too bad that they insist on calling it Indian wood. This is a favorite of mine. It's the Too Faced Shadow Insurance. Great eye primer. I used this for the first time this summer. This is the Sarah Chapman London Skin Assist Overnight Facial. And it's basically a facial oil that you sleep in and it leaves your skin super soft by the morning. I have a hit and miss love and hate with these. These are the Marc Jacobs eyeliners. They're a mechanical eyeliner. There's nothing left in that. This was in the color black. I had a number of them this size. Sometimes they're super duper black and like super pigmented and sometimes they're not. So I don't know if there's like a consistency in the batch making or what it is but when I've bought the longer ones in other colors besides black, like I have one in a deep bronze that I love, I wore it all summer, like I said I'm wearing the lilac one now, but these small black ones that I get are never consistent. I don't know why that is. This is another liquid liner because of age I have to let go. It's again from Urban Decay. Razor Sharp is what it's called. I don't know if that was the name of the color, but it's like an orangey copper there. But again, time waits for nobody but it kind of went off I've had it for so long it's the Paracone MD no blush blush it's a liquid that you just get a it's got a tiny little like a little wand and you just touch it on your cheek and then quickly blend it in it's almost the consistency of Benefit maybe just a little bit just a little bit thicker than Benetint um, but wow what a beautiful blush that is it's finicky you know what I mean because you're working with a liquid and stuff and your fingers but it does look so natural so I guess it's by fusion and it's their lip fusion and I've had their lip fusion in clear and I really liked it this one was butterscotch and it was like a matte orangey kind of you know what it made my lips look like remember in there's something about Mary the really tanned woman that had that <laughs> weird lip that's what it made my lips look like like I had painted them on or something <laughs> yucky this was kind of a cool product I've I've used it twice now but I, I don't think I'm gonna get it again it's the benefits brow wow conditioning primer um, I just think I'm getting like too much going on on my eyebrows and it's time to chill that out a bit <laughs> tried and true how many of them are in here two of them I guess the Kat Von D um, tattoo liner in trooper black Two of them, love them, best liners. Tiny little pot of loose shadow pigment I came to the end of. This was called Tickle Me, and it was from, I can't, re I can't remember the name of this brand. The initials are B-F-T-E-C. Oh, I can't believe I can't remember that. Anyway, it was a beautiful, I think you can see the remnants of it, like a beautiful teal. And I used to use this, which is why I went through it. I have a teal liner that I would line my upper lid with and then I would put my brush in that shadow and just kind of go over that line to make it even more poppy. I loved it. And used up this little sample. This was the Stila Kitten but in that um, Magnificent Metals eyeshadow. So there's like nothing left in there to even show you. It, it almost was like a flaky consistency and then you would rub it into your eye. It was very shiny. This was a waste of money. This is the uh, Lancome Aquatique in nude. It's it was I think it was like trying to compete with Max Paint Pot, uh, but the consistency was too dry. You had to drag too much on your eyes. In my humble opinion, this was a weird product. I got this as a sample through Ren, uh, Holt Renfrew. It's the Ernest Laszlo uh, cleansing oil, but it doesn't come out like an oil. It's like green with a foam at the top. You shake it up. It comes out really watery. It goes all over the place. If you're wearing anything. Guaranteed you're going to get it on you. You're supposed to rub it all in your face and then it comes with a little bar of green soap that you then get wet and rub after and it's supposed to be like a double cleansing in one step and uh, messy and bleh. This was the Dr. Brandt Dermabrasion, poor Dermabrasion. Loved it. Oh, so sad. I finally came to the end of this and it made me weep. This is the Luna Twilight. Okay, so when did the first Twilight movie come out? A million years ago. Look how thin it is. They came out with a line of makeup all for the Twilight series. And these little, I had two of these. And there was like a blush and four eyeshadows. And this one was the Bella palette. 
and the blush was great. The blush reminded me a little bit of Dandelion. Um, and there were two, sorry, there were two shadows and two lip. The lips were just like lip gloss. They were fine. But it was these two shadows were incredible and I have never found a dupe for them. It was the most, it, what, it looks like just like a, sort of like a pale beige and a bit of a pinkier beige. But it may, it was such a beautiful way to define the eye but looked like you were wearing no makeup at all. Oh my god, if anybody has used these and if anybody knows of a dupe for these two pinkish tone, so amazing. This is the Gimme Brow by Benefit. Of course, it's just the tinted brow um, color, which I love. Another one of these liquid liners I'm letting go. This is the Makeup Forever Aqua Liner in this gorgeous, oh my god, look at that color. Such a beautiful bright blue. Whew. I'll have to replace that one. And this is funny because you've seen this once before. I love it when I get to the bottom of a pen and I've gotten to the bottom of another pen. This is just like a pen that I write with. It's uh, one of my favorite style pens. It's the Pilot G2 with a 0 0.7 tip. And this was in this beautiful, the ink was the same color as this turquoise that you see here. And I used all this up on my morning page. This was a fail. I bought a bunch of these little mini uh, Sephora brand sponges thinking they would be as good as a beauty blender. Here's the problem. Some of them are shaped right, but the minis we use for in here, right? In around the eyes. Well, this is, there's no fine tip. So it's, it's too big. Like it's not shaped right. <laughs> so it was kind of a fail. This is the Their Real Push Up Liner. And again, I didn't like it in purple, and I certainly didn't like it in black either. This was a little mini of the Gimme Brow, um, which was wonderful. Again, I love this product. didn't realize I had one more of these in here. That's those Clinique Chubby Stick. This one was in the color Graped Up. And again, it had that lovely 90s feel. This was the Stila Stay All Day Liquid Liner in Intense Black. And it is an intense black. I only have one complaint with the Stila liners. I love them. I talk about them all the time. But they go frayed a lot. Like the tip gets uh, very frayed very easy and then you're no longer getting a precise line, which is a bummer. This was again another Urban Decay liquid liner. This one in Perversion, which is the... Oh! Did I just pour... I just opened that upside down. I might have poured a uh, liner on my leg or the floor. Anyway, a super black block. Did I get it on the floor? Mm -hmm. uh, confusing the way that opened it. The long part is the handle, not the, not the paw. And then two more little things in here that were skincare. This is Take a Breath Night by Philosophy, which was really lovely. And this little product was so impressive that I bought it in full size. This is the Clinique Pep Start eye cream and I bought it in full size and almost finished it. It has a real uh, shrinking effect on the skin around the eye and I absolutely loved it. All right well you know what guys that was so long I think I'm going to cut it even though I have a whole table full of stuff I'm going to turn this into two videos that which I've just finished which I just showed you this will be the makeup portion of it and we're going to cut here probably have some lunch and then tear our dog's legs off so he'll stop walking and clean up the mess of ink that I spilled all over the floor and then I'm going to come back and film the rest of this so that you'll have two videos on two different days so let me know if you tried any of these things again if any of you know a dupe for that incredible color let me know or if you still have that palette and you're trying to get rid of it send it to me i loved it so much um again i am candy from the candy show thank you for watching give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed make sure you subscribe and i will see you in the next video see ya